good, pleasant, whatever. I don't know how you're feeling. <laughs> morning to everyone. Um, yep. Medyo sad. Although hindi good. Medyo sad this morning. No? This is our final episode for season yes. one. Ang short ng season natin. No? Although it has spanned technically two years. Episode one was 2020. <laughs> so it has True. been two years. It has mm-hmm. been two years to be fair. Uh, so welcome again to um, the podcast where we're mostly taking this once daily, but we release it like once a week. So... <laughs> Once daily. daily with Jarvin and Char. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Um, wait, taking a sip. I don't mind we're doing this in the morning. Cause see, like for the past mm. two days, I've been waking up at like 10 30, and that's already early for me. So like so proud of you, partner. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank, I have you to thank for this. You, you, you um Do they you fix your not, body clock. <laughs> you you make not only your fiance better, you make other people in your life better, and that's just amazing. Uh... Oh, Thank hard, hard. you. Okay. <laughs> um. So, so this drug is ano interesting to say the least. Mm-hmm. Do, do you get to talk about this a lot? Honestly, like, in the context of classroom setting, ganon. Uh, in practice, for sure we encounter it, but like in the classroom, yeah. Sa classroom setting, actually not that much. Talaga. Mm-hmm. Well, nasa, yeah. nasa, nasa books ba natin siya? I, I I don't remember. Was it in our books? I it's think there, yes. right? Yep. Mm-mm. See, this Include is a European enough. drug, and usually mm-hmm. for our for the Philippine standard text, they tend to like really gloss over the European drugs, right? <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah, but then we have a lot of those European but not US drugs, and I think mm-hmm. it's really important to tackle them, kaya tapa ano. Yep. Especially we see them a lot, used a lot, no? Mm-hmm. So trimetazidine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you look at it, it's not very frequently mentioned, na, as you yourself have said. Apparently, this has been around for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Like, decades. 50-ish years? I don't know which is older. These are close at but this is pretty old na rin pala. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like, two, I, I thought it was like, you know, latest early 2000s. Like, yeah. The, have you, have you, but, sige, not in the classroom, but in practice, you have seen this. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I also have family members actually who use this, so right? I'm quite familiar with it. As like maintenance, nila ganon. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm, uh, as maintenance. Oh, balado na kung maintenance. So mm-hmm. you know, pe- uh, people, we're gonna see this a lot in practice, talaga. Yep. All right. Um, one thing that that brought this drug to my interest actually is apparently, like furosemide. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, like furosemide. Uh, one thing this has to come with furosemide is actually also on the list of banned substances by anti-doping agencies. Ooh, I'm not familiar with that partner. What yeah, do you mean by anti-doping par- agencies? Anti-doping, as in, um, in sports, apparently some mm. drugs can purportedly give athletes an edge, and this is supposed to oh. be one of them. Oh, okay. Um, and and. I don't know the exact reason because when they read through the manual, like they mm-hmm. just list the drug. They don't really list why. Um, but you know, I have a theory, and that's really to do with SMOA. Mm-hmm. H- what what do we how how do how do we classify this drug? Like when we actually, talk about it. Actually, partner, when you're going to try to search trimetazidine, mm-hmm. may mga lumalabas sa mga common or repeated keywords like. When I searched mm-hmm. for this drug, the number mm-hmm. one keyword that I saw or classification that I saw for this medication was anti-anginal agent. That's the most Ant- common mm. yep, um, right. classification yeah. that I've been seeing for trimetazidine. Uh-huh. And then I think the second one is anti-ischemic agent. All right. Um, and then the okay. other ones are like cardiovascular agent miscellaneous. Mga ganon. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I I don't like the first and the third. You know me. I hate indication based meaning yep. because that that's so <laughs> annoying. It's like it's like asking a kid what do you want to be when you grow up, and then then and then you like give them a choice between doctor, lawyer, engineer. Mm-hmm. But, but but rather <laughs> but rather why not ask them what do you want to do? Yeah. When you grow up, parang mm-hmm. ganon yung peg, di ba? You're limiting the drug. To, to what those yeah. forces covered for. Agree, we can agree. do so much more than that. This is mm-hmm. its unlimited potential and you're just saying doctor, <laughs> lawyer, engineer. Come on. Come on. You can do better than that. Yeah, right? true. At true. least gimmick, I can forgive a bit because like, it, it, it's kind of what it does then. But mm-hmm, I feel like, again, mm-hmm. it can do more than that. Have you come mm-hmm. across PFOX? Uh, not yet, partner. First mm, time to P-Fox. hear this, that as well. 
Yeah, PFOX. That, that's what I put in my handouts kasi eh. When I talk mm-hmm. about trimetazidine, that's like PFOX inhibitor. Ooh. So what and do you mean by PFOX, partner? Ito na naman tayo P-Fox. sa mga acronyms natin. Oh, nga, eh. Napakadaming P-Fox. acronyms. PFOX na lang pa siya. PFOX. PFOX. Okay. If you parse that out, it's actually, mm. pretty much it's MOA. Partial fatty acid oxidation. Oh, Okay. Yeah, which again, you need to mm. go back to the physiology, which is uh, the joke lang. No, important, mm. important siya, important siya. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because apparently the heart can, uh, it, it gets energy, mm-hmm. can be from fatty acids or glucose. Yeah. Naman tayo sa biochem. Ito na naman, biochem, biochem, biochem with Yeah, as we know sa biochem. <laughs> yeah, pero as we know sa biochem, di ba, ano mas efficient? Di ba, glucose metabolism. Mm-hmm. Pero normally kasi, the bulk of metabolism sa heart is like fatty acids. Mm-hmm. And I think and as you you yourself have seen, I don't know. You tell me what it looks like. What what does it look like? Sa tingin mo, or you've seen a lot more in action kasi dapat na eh, right? So what does it mm-hmm. look like? Do you think when a heart gets overloaded with fatty acids, like there are just so many fatty acids, it cannot metabolize them all anymore? Well, what will likely happen in that scenario? Siguro partner in the context of overloading fatty acids so that we can siguro simplify it for those that are not familiar with kasi may balita ko partner may listeners daw tayo ano non medically allied so yay more ah, listeners so non health professional oh <laughs> yep yep <laughs> cool 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 okay okay um so what kind of context are they ano would they yeah. like to know um maybe more on kasi i think on our other listeners can relate with with the diseases that we are about to mention as well. Yeah, okay, okay some, no, no, that's fair. That's fair. Yep, all right, all right. Some of them are maybe taking this medication, this trimetazidine. So, mm. baka they would like to know in that context, partner. So, um, siguro we'll try to simplify or, or use layman's term as much as possible for our non-medically no, yeah. allied um listeners, di ba? So that's that a fun challenge. That's, that's a fun challenge. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. partner. <laughs> So basically, yung it, sa fatty mm. acid siguro when we're going to try to explain. Yun nga, sabi natin kanina. Did we just say na, fats? Yeah, maybe fat. It's still, in, it's still accurate, context. right? I mm. have to check because I, I don't want to be the chemical imbalance person simplifying <laughs> to the point na mali na siya. No, there's such a thing, <laughs> eh, diba? We've seen that. So, I, yep. I'm checking, I'm check, we'll, we'll check with each other from time mm-hmm, to time. Mm-hmm. You know? yep, so, agree accurate naman is saying fats. Fats mm-hmm. versus asukal. Yep. Um, in that context, partner, fats. Because as we've said earlier, di ba usually nga, pag sinesearch natin tong medication to, we see it in the context of angina, ischemia, right? Yeah. That big, big terms that we usually yeah. see we'll, as We'll get to the definitions in a bit, don't worry. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, agree on that partner that we use this in, in the context of fats. So, if yeah. we see the heart overloaded with fats, di ba? Mm. So, technically, what do you first think of it? So, kapag na-overload yung heart ng fats, of course, there will be abnormality in the function. Like, uh, the usual pumping function, the usual expected function of the heart, mahihirapan siya because of so, these fats. So, mapapagod siya, you're saying. Yeah, mapapagod siya, ma-overwhelm siya because Mm-mm. aside dun sa usual function niya, it needs to overcome this fat overload or this the presence of so many fats in the vessels, for example, or in the mm. other parts of the heart. So, yun lang. Context for our non-medical yeah. allied um, listeners. <laughs> so, yun. So, may hirapan yung heart natin if it has a lot of fat per mm-hmm. se. No? In in that, in the simplest context in, mm. in this discussion. So, yeah, so that's heart failure, basically, right? Mm-hmm. But, you and know, that, that's failure, one thing. Yep. It's, it's another whole complex topic. That's so, another whole thing. Yeah. Yep, that, that, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's kind of when you oversimplify, oversimplifying it, it's kind of good na yung heart literally yep. mm-hmm. yeah but then the other thing is if like not only pagod yung heart pero mm-hmm. you also mentioned hindi niya ma lagpasan yung barado na fats yep mm-hmm. so yeah, if meron na kang barado na siya uh-oh. yep mm-hmm. yeah. agree on that context <laughs> and and um I, I guess we go back to that elementary function of what blood does because mm-hmm. that's what the heart does it pumps blood why does it need to pump blood the blood carries <laughs> oxygen Yep. And right. nutrients and you yeah, know and everything. All yeah, that that basically. We, yep, all that we need. <laughs> mm. And if that of those oxygen and nutrients don't get to the parts they need to get, 
that's where we get to our definition of terms na, no? Yep, agree on yeah. that part. Man. That is... Okay, okay, kasi earlier you mentioned angina, ischemia. Ischemia. And, yeah, yep. na honestly, kahit ako nung student ako, like sobrang na, na-wind lang ako. Kasi, like, siguro na-define naman yung terms when I was in, in class. Pero, mm-hmm. because I didn't have the bigger picture, I couldn't connect them to each other very well. And so, what ended up happening was my brain was a word salad of angina, ischemia, infarction, coronary arteries. Like, like are these separate salad things? Words. Are they the same? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so let, let's give context for all of our viewers. Like, what do mm-hmm. we mean when we say this is um for angina, this is this for, is for ischemia. ischemia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do I we define these that. terms exactly? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I agree on that, partner. Even when I'm discussing these terms, when when you like check for students' understanding, it's very hard because yeah. although it's interconnected, yeah, you know, you know, and I establish that they're interconnected, sila. But you need to parang like differentiate these terms to be able Mm-mm. to like have a solid knowledge or so, a foundational knowledge on the treatment of these diseases. So basically, yeah. diba, when when you hear the word angina or angina, whatever the pronunciation is, mm. it's it's associated with chest pain. So yun yung palagi kong reiterate sa student ko. So first and foremost, kasi bago kayo makonfuse, sobrang daming terms, sobrang daming classifications and other definition you i think the first thing that we can associate angina is is chest pain so mm. chest pain but merong other context do na papasok yung other types ng angina so so you're saying if i punch someone and they say ow that's not angina <laughs> yep, and then, because... i punch someone in the chest and they feel pain in the chest that's not angina <laughs> right yep okay. angina in the yeah, cardio I don't get of course to punch someone <laughs> uh. In the cardiovascular context naman tayo dito, partner. So, hindi naman porket, like, when you push someone. I wanted to do crimes. Bakit ba? <laughs> and then, you just call it angina, no? And yeah. <laughs> no, no, I didn't punch you. That's angina. <laughs> no, partner. Basically, there is an underlying yun nga. Dito na papasak yung medyo techy-techy or, or technical terms Mm-mm. associated with it. So, aside Mm-mm. from chest pain, Kasi mm. yun yung usual yung nakikita natin with patients. Mm-mm. It has an underlying factor why your patient is having a chest pain. So, I think mm-hmm. yun yung two important factors that we can associate with angina. So, yun nga. Good point on that partner. Hindi oh, okay. lang po basta-basta nagkaka-chest pain ang patient for no known reason. <laughs> or or biglang nagkaka-chest pain. Na. Yep. Oh, yeah. Automatic. Okay, angina na yun pag may chest right. pain. So, merong underlying criteria or conditions partner. Yeah. And for mm-hmm. cardiovascular concerns, usually that's due to possible ischemia? Yep. Or is it ischemia? Um, ka? Yeah. Do we go straight to ischemia from angina? Yep. Um, so basically, your patients can have chest pain because number one, hindi balance. Diba sinasabi natin partner kanina yung demands ng heart. So it's very important for our body to like be able to keep up with the demands mm. and supply of the oxygen. So hmm. one possible cause of of angina actually partner is y- our body not being able to keep up with this very hard to balance supply and hmm. demand for some patients. Yeah, it's like when I want a chicken burger and the grab up person give me my chicken burger and I'm like, "Grr." You like that, I guess. <laughs> if you consider yep. chicken burgers oxygen. Mhm. Chicken burger. But yes, yeah, basically, right? <laughs> Yep, and basically. I guess for the Greek aficionados, like who, who, those who are really into the etymology of words, um, mm-hmm. it, it, what did help me with ischemia was I broke it down to isk and hemia. Because mm-hmm. when you think okay. of hemia, you think hema, hematology, or you hear it, you hear this lingo's hospital, like sahima, ganyan, or yep. um, hemoglobin, blood, mm-hmm. basically. Blood. And yep, isk, isk, basically, deprived of, right? Cut Mm-mm. off. So, ischemia, kulang sa dugo, kulang sa mm-hmm. oxygen. Yep. And, 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 and it becomes clearer, right? Mm-hmm. So, so, so angina, usually in this context, like, tama ba? Just correct me if I'm wrong. It's basically chest pain kasi hindi na makahinga yung, ano, yung heart, right? Kasi the heart also needs oxygen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it not just oxygen. our brain or other organs. Even the heart itself needs oxygen. So it pumps its own blood then. Yep. In in the coronary arteries, like in the coronary mm. vessels, it it has it pumps blood because it it needs blood to function as well. 
Yeah. And so mm-hmm. if kulang, kulang siya ng oxygen, that's that's ischemia. Yeah. For the heart. So yeah. So usually partner, I think baka mata ng ng mga audience natin, baka they are curious kailan nagkakaroon ng lack of like supply or hindi makapag-keep up yung yung heart natin sa demand ng oxygen supply. So you, mm. usually that happens when there is a blockade. So yung I think iko ko na dito partner yung fats na sinasabi mm. natin kanina when mm-hmm. we're talking about the the classification of trimetazidine. So sometimes for some patients for various reasons no pwedeng predispose sila meaning um nasa history na po ng patient yung pagkakaroon ng ganitong classing condition or generally yung patient natin may atherosclerosis no mm. so uh, for for all of our listeners or watchers when you say athero- atherosclerosis this is basically plaque build up yung bara fatty build up so these fats um they do not just appear magically or overnight it it mm. gets to be built up no so mm. over the decades so yun nga mm. kaya sinasabi ko kanina partner some patients would actually be predisposed to this condition because of their history, family history. So maybe the father or mother, and we don't know kung sino yung may previously lang, um, let's say, dyslipidemia or atherosclerosis per se. So mm. yung ganong predispositions are very important as well in, in this discussion. So yun right. lang yung gusto ko i-clarify. It's not overnight, like you have a, pl- <laughs> a fatty build up and then, the next day you have other it, 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 it's not just like one one meal of like lechon or bagnet basically yep, no <laughs> yeah yeah okay so basically your example of um the build up of fat i think that mm-hmm. that 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 hits that hits two of the mechanisms eh, basically diba yep. na mm-hmm. kasi barado hindi makadalo yung dugo so less supply of oxygen yeah and then okay. at the same time because barado your heart needs to exert a lot more effort mm-hmm. so taas yung demand for yep, oxygen agree. kasi mas kailangan ng effort. So, increased mm-hmm. demand pero kulang ng supply ng oxygen. Yep, partner. And okay. and eventually, eventually, the another consequence din, di ba? If the ischemia is prolonged, mm-hmm. you end up with the, 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 the third word that we often see, infarction. Yeah. So, yun nga, partner. Agree on that. We do not want our patients to have prolonged ischemia. So, if usually mm-hmm. the clinicians would see na yung patient meron ng ischemia, automatically it is going to be addressed. It's clinically mm. significant. So we do mm. not want our patients to progress to the third term that you've just mentioned, which is infarction. Because mm. basically, when you have infarction, sometimes kasi yung plaque partner, nag-rupture siya. So yung mm. this fatty, fatty buildup in the vessels of our heart, in our blood vessels, it can actually rupture partner. So if mm. it ruptures, to, discuss ko to pala with <laughs> students, Mm-hmm. Yung um top ng fat build up when it ruptures, gusto yan ng mga platelets. Gusto gusto mm-hmm. siya ng platelets. So it will promote platelet aggregation. So imagine partner, meron ka ng build up, let's say partial build up lang to begin with, partial mm-hmm. occlusion, and then this particular unstable plaque ruptures, gusto yan ng mga platelets. So it will migrate to that specific area, magkakaroon na ng total occlusion partner and it can yeah. lead to infarction. So what you're saying is it's kind of like sorry, a major graphic. So you can make a heads up, by the way, for those watching the video feed. I'm gonna show my wound here. So it's like, eto mm-hmm. yung parang sugat sa labas sa palat ko pero on inside yung mismo yep. ugat. Imagine it inside, yeah, your yeah. vessels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So kasi like for some, if you've seen yung mga sugat natin, medyo makapal yung ano yan, di ba? E emulate ng blood vessels natin yung mga ugat natin. So parang yung clot na yan, pero na makapal na yan, pero nasa loob. Yep. Tapos mm-hmm. may nakahalo sa pats pa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Imagine so from it's... partial to total. So yung yung mm-hmm. plot natin, totally wala nang. Hindi na mm-hmm. makapass through yung blood. Wala na talaga makapass through. Yeah. And if walang blood, walang oxygen. Walang yep. oxygen. Kung ano naman yung kulang sa oxygen, makamatay. Ah, yeah, mm-hmm. so total, yeah. wala na talaga. Occluded, Uh-oh. 100%, no supply. And if mamatay, and kung ano man yung mamatay dyan sa loob, kasi walang oxygen, hindi na siyang mapupuhay ulit, di ba? Yup, mm-hmm. it's mm. irreversible, partner. Agree. Yeah, yeah so we do probably want to really, really prevent that. So, mm-hmm. uh, um, so when it comes to like, um, I, I guess some, like again, bigger picture stuff, when it comes to mm-hmm. 
Um, when we're talking Troy Matazzi din and Angina, I, I, I like, mm-hmm. there, there, there are multiple kinds of Angina, right? It's not mm-hmm. just like, Angina is one, the same for everyone. Mm-hmm. See, yep. I think uh-huh. last time you mentioned unstable Angina din eh, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, 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 how do we differentiate the types of Angina and like, where, where are we gonna fit Troy Matazzi din into all of that? Oh, okay. So, yun nga, partner. Marami kasing different types ng angina. So, you actually have yung stable. You actually have also the unstable one. You also you also actually have yung what you call Prince metal or yung mm. variant, mm-hmm. yung vasospastic angina. So, mm-hmm. let's try to to just, just differentiate each of the mm-hmm. of the types. So, All basically, right. when you have stable angina, um, to grow in the context of how the chest pain is for the patient, ganun ko siya siguro i differentiate and when the chest pain occurs. So, right. um, when you say stable angina kasi partner, ito, I think ito yung most common out of the three that we're just going mm. to discuss for, for this um topic. So, pag stable, yeah. there is chest pain and the chest pain actually varies. So, it can last from less than one minute up until 13 minutes. Right, I mean nga, right. sabi natin, the chest pain, it's not just there parang at the click of the hand or bigla-bigla na lang. Um, it's usually precipitated by factors. So, mm. meron kang triggering factors. So, for example, patient mo, after nag-exercise, pwede mag-develop ng chest pain for stable angina. So, yun yung mga mm-hmm. triggering factors niya. Exercise, stress, emotional stress, even the <laughs> cold weather for, for some instances. So, oh, yeah. Not surprising. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> climate change, basically. Climate change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, very important climate change. <laughs> yep. So, yun nga, partner. And um, I think ang gusto kong sabihin with stable angina that we need our, our listeners or our watchers to understand is if you have stable angina, this can be relieved when you ask the patients to rest or when they take nitroglycerin. So, you mm. in, in that context, in that discussion, na relieve yung stable angina when you mm. ask your patients to rest for a while or when they take medication. Mm. Capitalism has something to say about that. Yep. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, no resting for you. You're only yeah. valuable to society if you're productive. Work, work, work. work. <laughs> yun, yun partner for stable. For unstable Mm-mm. angina naman, um, uh, for some patients, we see the chest pain for more than 20 minutes. Mm. So, w- when you see these patients prolonged, ang tagal, masakit yung, yung dibdib ng patients natin for these types Mm-mm. of patients. And uh, usually, when they rest or when they are given an anti-anginal medication, like for example, right. nitroglycerin, Mm-mm. hindi siya na relieve or there is a decreased response. Okay. To this type of angina. So, you need okay. gusto kong i-differentiate for our listeners or our viewers. So, again, stable, it can be addressed, no? Na-address siya when you ask your patients to rest, na kawala yung chest pain. Pero pag unstable, um, uh-huh. if you ask your patients to rest or even to take an, a medication to address the chest pain, hindi ganun kaganda yung response or there is a decreased response or for some patients, no response at all. So, there is mm. continued um, progression or there is continued chest pain for unstable. Okay. And then for Do, the last, uh-huh. yep. for the last Prince Metal, uh-huh. right? For the yeah, for the last yung Prince Metal angina, which is basically um even at rest, so major same sila ni unstable. Even at rest, mayro angina. Pero ito naman ang precipitating factor niya is kind of vague, no? Pweding sabi ng ibang studies, lifestyle. So those who are smoking, drinking alcohol. Mm. Um, very often can can have this condition or can can trigger yung so when you say kasi Prince Metal partner versus spastic so bigla na lang nagsaspasm yung yung coronary arteries natin sa heart so it can mm. lead nga to to possible angina to possible mm. chest pain so even mm. at rest this can occur so right. okay. yun yun yung major differences ng ng mga angina natin do do we still also differentiate them by ano yung amount of barado yep. sa arteries mm-hmm. na yun? We can differentiate it by that pa rin, no? like it's it's still like in, that that's still what the literature is saying that mm-hmm. they are differentiated by like no what so, for some it's more included yeah mm-hmm. so 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 like the for unstable angina yun yung mas mas barado tama ba 
Yeah, for anchor? stable partner, for stable angina, you yan. So for con- for the context of everyone, pare parehas yan may bara. Pero iba iba lang yung state ng bara nila, yung degree ng bara, and kung stable or unstable ba yung bara from the name itself. So mm. when you have stable angina, basically there is occlusion. Roughly, the literature actually partner, it varies. So some literature mm. would say more than 50% for stable, some would say more than 70%. So let's put it at 50 to 70% ang bara for stable angina. The difference is for stable angina, it's fixed. So, meaning nandun lang yung bara. It's just mm-hmm. fixed in that specific area of the coronary artery, let's say. Pero pag unstable angina, merong bara, around 50 to 70% pa din occluded. Pero from the name itself, unstable. So, pwedeng nag-start na unti-unting mag-rupture. Yung sinasabi ko kanina, partner, sa discussion ah, natin. Ah, paano na? Mm-hmm. Nandun na, may nag-rupture na dun sa fibrous Sa abog na siya. Yup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, meron right. na nag-rupture dun sa fibrous cap nung bara, nung fat deposit, nung plaque deposit. So, may nag-rupture na part na. So, unti-unti pwede nang possible mag-promote ng platelet aggregation. So, love ng mga platelets yon Kapag may nakita silang nag-rupture, pupunta sila dun. So, more yeah. or less, there is plaque disruption na for unstable angina. Yeah. Hey, um, again, for our viewers mm-hmm. who might be diagnosed with these conditions, um, yeah. uh, well, Arita is not really to scare anyone. But yeah. if mm-hmm. you feel any, like if you feel stressed listening to these kinds of details and you have questions, please do ask your doctor, right? As usual, yes. the disclaimer, this is medical advice. Do not change, mm-hmm. stop, start any meds without talking to your doctor first, yeah. right? Yes. But yeah, so but I can understand doctor. like listening to very graphic details like that mm-hmm. can really be scary for <laughs> people. Because like, I'm not mm-hmm. living with the condition, but yeah. other people might. And it might be mm-hmm. a different experience for them. No? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it but of course that's... Yeah, partner yeah it helps. Like, what? Sorry. To mm-hmm. discuss, sometimes I I do that. And di pala sometimes I I always do that with my students. Like Mm-mm. you need to make them understand. I I show pictures in my discussion what a stable angina looks like, what an unstable angina looks like. I I search for pictures, even the the real deal. Yung pictures talaga ng mga actual plaques, because you can mm-hmm. often see that in in literature. So they need to understand. Ah, okay. Ganito yung itsura ng bara. Kapag ka may unstable yeah. ka, ganito. Pag may ang uh, pag may stable ka, ganito. And then yun na nga yung mga STEMI and STEMI, yan. So ano itsura ng heart when and when yeah. it comes to that? Yep. What about like patients? Like do you talk to patients about these ano, these conditions? Or like when they get a diagnosis, do you explain these kinds of details to them? Um, As a clinical pharmacist before partner in my first institution, Mm-mm. no. I, I ah. did not have a chance like to really explain the nitty-gritty. Mm-hmm. What I do explain is I make them understand why they are taking the medication. So, you mm-hmm. mentioned a bit of a MOA, pero hindi na yung ganun ka-detail. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Just for them and enough for them to understand. So, just to have them parang yung context of why do they need this particular medication? Why they need to take it? So, not yeah. that really graphic detail because I think the cardiologist will will do that, no? will, will explain mm-hmm. that detail for, for the, the 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 condition itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, 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 that's fair. Just uh, just also checking to see how it goes. But yeah, um, so you talked all about, the, we did all of the anginas, all of the underlying, just a brief bit into the yep. mm-hmm. underlying disease process. Where does, where does trimetazidine, so we're going back to trimetazidine now, okay. finally, mm-hmm. right? So <laughs> with all those three anginas you mentioned, like where does it fit there exactly? Mm, partner, if you're going to check literature and even for for some of my patients diagnosed with angina, you will mm-hmm. see this medication. So I, I saw patients, because I handled geriatric patients, so I saw geriatric patients being given trimetazidine. Those with, um those that had MI mm-hmm. in, in the post-recovery phase, ah, so I saw this medication. M- MI, so again, for viewers, MI, mm-hmm. we're basically yep. short heart attack. Mm-hmm, Pagkatapos mm-hmm. ng heart attack, post-MI. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, I, I saw this medication post-MI. And mm. then, I also saw this medication pre-MI. So, for those who are like predisposed. So, when I say pre-MI partner, in the context of um this patient has a lot of comorbidities that Mm-mm. can lead to a possible heart attack. So, ganun right. po siyang sense nakita in, in the clinical setting. One, for patient na wala pang MI, hindi pa nagkaka-MI, and the other is nagka-MI na. 
in in the right. post recovery phase mm-hmm. yeah and, and here and here it really comes in the like sobrang hiwalay talaga remove from what we are what we read in the lit and what's actually mm-hmm. seen kasi when you read it you see stable angina mm-hmm. but in practice you're not going to see stable angina unstable yep. angina you're going to see people on aspirin clopidogrel losartan yeah. simvastatin and then throw in dimethazidine maybe um and that super super expensive nerve supplement that I really hate anyway joke yeah partner <laughs> <laughs> so 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 yeah you're gonna see you're gonna see a lot of that and so like which of these is trimethazidine for or is it like for all of them <laughs> mm, it's hard and, and the problem is mm. in, in cardio everything is connected eh Yep. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 the problems in the heart, and you connect it to the problems in the brain and in the blood vessels. Like, mm-hmm. right. It's so, a so, whole so, shebang. So, so <laughs> how, how, how do we reconcile that? Like, when, 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 when the recommendations are for stable angina, quote unquote, and you see it in practice in just in a salad of comorbidities, how, how do we rationalize trimethazid in use in? an actual in, in a real world context basically mm-hmm. and not just in a one diagnosis bubble yep because people mm-hmm. in real life don't just have one hindi lang hindi lang isang sakit meron yes, partner life, right? yeah so how do we explain it in real life mm-hmm. yun nga partner as i've said earlier when you're handling these types of patients you do not just handle their stable angina just yeah. what the textbook says you do yeah. not just handle their NSTEMI. O kahit sabi mo NSTEMI yan. A lot of plethora of, of comorbidities. So you just hmm. do not handle. Yun nga yung sinasabi ko sa students. When you see these patients, you do not just see them with stable angina. You see them with hypertension. You see them with DM. You see them with heart failure. Sadly, gan- ganun siya. With, with cardiovascular hmm. disease, you, you cannot just pick one. Hmm. Sadly. So hmm. you have a lot. So in that context, partner, it's hard to compartmentalize. Yeah. I think that's my main point here. It, it's going to be hard to say that, okay. Because sometimes I think uh, some of us, may ganun tayong mentality or mindset. That if this medication is used for as an anti-anginal, anti-ischemic medication, you use it particularly for that. For cardiovascular context or even for other context ng medication use, you cannot compartmentalize your medication. You cannot mm. say when your patient is taking trimetazidine, it's only going to be used for stable angina. Right. In, in the clinical setting, partner, in the clinical context. So basically, you cannot like say, sa pag nag-refer ka sa clinician na, okay doc, ito kasing trimetazidine, pang ano lang natin to eh, ganitong, medi- ganitong indication. So you cannot use that reasoning or that context when we're dealing with these types of medication. That's why mm. I saw it in the pre pre-MI stage maybe for that I, I cannot conclude kasi nga iba-iba ng condition si, si patient but maybe <laughs> <laughs> in that context they're trying to prevent a future kasi that's that's your goal if your patient is predisposed in having a heart attack nakita na ng clinician na itong patient ko malaki ang chance the clinician will try to prevent it as early as possible. So, yun yung approach. So, maybe in that context, trimetazin is, is being given to prevent a future heart attack. But in the post-recovery context, in the clinical setting, of course, they're trying to prevent another another future heart attack, another future okay. MI episode. And trying to address the current, di ba? May baraka. So, yun yung nag sa current MI, heart attack episode ni patient. So, in, in that context, they're trying to address that. So yun lang yung gusto kong i-point out. We we do not compart- compartmentalize like like stuff like this nalala in the cardiovascular setting. Because it's going to be really hard. Okay, so, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, no. I I I love the point you're bringing. I was I was going to segue mm-hmm. to another thing, but since you mentioned this, this is the kind of stuff I love talking about then. You talked about preventing heart attacks, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, my question is, sorry, I sound like an interviewer talaga, but no, I I'm <laughs> I, I'm going no, somewhere it's okay, with this. Partner. Like um can it prevent heart attacks? Because because mm. what we want to do might mm-hmm. be totally dif- different from what it can do. Yep. Like mm-hmm. um case in point, uh beta blockers. Oh yeah. <laughs> beta blockers, they can lower blood pressure. No question mm-hmm. about that. Yep. But can they lower prevent heart attacks? 
ten- tenolol, prevent heart attacks. I was going to talk about tenolol, but that's your you know. favorite drug part. Yeah, among that's the my beta favorite. Blockers. That's my fav- one of my favorite to hate. Like I think it's my top five of things to hate. Tenolol specifically. So 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 ganon, di ba? Yeah. So yeah. So in in bringing that analogy to trimetazidine. Oh, okay. I've okay. seen clinical trials. Um, there's no conflict here. It seems they can reduce chest pain episodes. The babawasan yep. yung um bilang mm-hmm. ng um mga episodes ng chest pain. Mm-hmm. But, does that translate to, in the long term, mm-hmm. mas onting heart attacks? Like, in a group of, say, 100 patients. Of course, again, this is very, we're going back to the theoretical, no? pero I yeah. guess that's the, ano, that's, that's the uh, you need evidence the side of yep. learning. You need yeah, we, we, do, we do based. need, we do mm-hmm. need to temper experience with evidence kasi, Yep. Experience Agreed. does teach us a lot, but experience also does have a bit of confirmation bias, especially if you're seeing the same type of people again and again. Mm-hmm. So, um, or select confirmation and or selection bias. Mm-hmm. So, so you know how it is. The evidence based is always a, a mix. Yep. So people with experience will have to, will will have to lecture me a lot, um, <laughs> because I I have I slant more towards the evidence, mm-hmm. um, so I need to be tempered there. And then, you know, on the other hand, a lot of people who have more experience but don't have the time to, like, go through the latest lit, there needs to be some balancing there. Yeah. And agree, all of that needs to be tempered with the patient, with the patient, what the patient wants and wants their preferences. So, so in that sense, tempering your, uh, tempering the experience you've seen, what does the lit say? Can trimetazidine actually prevent heart attacks in, in whatever, again, in whatever population? Are there okay. populations or specific Groups of people, if it's trimetazidine, could prevent heart attacks. Mm, that's a good question, partner. Because same with our previous discussion with cardiovascular agents, of course, ang end goal naman natin dito is aside for our patients to get well, is not to for them to have another episode or another attack. So yeah. most of our cardiovascular agents are measured in that extent. Can they prevent yeah. another episode? Will it? lead to my patient having a long life? Will it lead to my patient not having a recurrent hospitalization? So, ganun yung mga nakikita natin sa literature, right, Parker? That's yeah. how they, they measure... The big outcomes. Yep. The, the, Harder... Parang, they call it a, a term. I forgot the term, partner. Parang quality uh, of life. QOL. They yeah. measure the oh, quality of life. For, yeah. For... And then there are also like the other outcomes they call major cardiovascular events. Heart yep. attacks, mm-hmm. stroke, things like mm-hmm. that. Agree As opposed that. to those are harder to measure, right? Yeah, it takes years. You said yourself, it Long. takes decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As it compared takes... to say, how many times you get chest pain, you can measure that yeah. over weeks, Mm-mm. months. It's easier, let her less difficult. Yep. So partnering so what have you studies, seen? yeah, it it mm-hmm. really takes a long time. Agree on that. So mga longitudinal studies yan. So I actually came across one article. This was published twenty twenty, and it it's a placebo controlled randomized trial. Is, so, is that the post PCI trial? Yeah, yeah. 18 PCI. Oh, okay. Huh? Did you see that? that, that I, I might same... have seen the same one. I might have seen the same uh-huh. one. Okay, okay. So go on. Yeah. So basically, they tried to compare the... They assess the anti-anginal effects of trimetazidine um, with around 6,000 patients who had uh-huh. undergone successful PCI. So for, for okay. context, this is percutaneous coronary intervention. So basically, okay. may stent. So yeah. for, for our other listeners or viewers, may stent po na, na in-insert kay patient. So, Para uh, yung blood vessel mag ano, mas... Uh-oh, because of the bara, the Barado. occlusion. Uh-oh. Yep. So they they trying to to widen the blood vessel in that context. Mm. So trimetazidine, anti-anginal effects, uh, post-PCI, successful PCI for stable angina or for n STEMI. So when we say n STEMI, this is non ST elevated myocardial infarction. Mm-hmm. Sorry, and daming mga terms and daming acronyms. So they they tried to check as well, aside from your anti-anginal effects on trimetazidine, they were also trying to check placebo versus trimetazidine in terms of the bigger picture. Yung sinasabi natin mm. bigger picture partner. So cardiac placebo death. being just a starch pill, basically. Yep. In this case. No API, Harina no lang. active oh. ingredient. Harina yep. versus trimetazidine, basically. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, Harina versus Dimetagin. Mm. I like that partner. <laughs> so, it, it's easier to do for cardiovascular. For psychotropics, mahirap ma- i-mask yung placebo. Mm-hmm. Eh, diba? But yeah. So, true. Agree. So, basically, bigger picture um, outcomes, cardiac death, 
hospital admission because of a cardiac event, yun yung measure, recurrence of angina that may require an addition or let's say an addition of medication or removal or any changes to that. So they tried to measure that that bigger picture with trimetazidine and and, and placebo for for angina in that context. So they found out na walang significant difference in that particular trial between trimetazidine and the harina, the placebo. Were, were these patients, I I know we would need an entire separate podcast for these kinds of articles kasi for the yeah. context of our viewers and um, listeners, when you talk about um, clinical trials like this, you can't just skim over the abstract and results. Although yes. it's very tempting to do so, let's face it. Mm-hmm. For those with very limited time, it's very tempting to do so na mm-hmm. abstract, okay, that's it. I'll take it at face value kasi you really need to dissect this eh. Paano mm-hmm. nila ginawa? Sino yeah. ba yung inaralan nila? Ano yung inclusion, mga ibang gamot na take? Criteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I guess we're gonna have to balance it. Like, not simplify too much. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but at the same time, like, uh, I, I leave leave some room for like, mm-hmm. um, critique of the results. Um, yep. but it's hard like, partner pero it, yeah it's so hard because we, we don't have that much time because we might end mm-hmm. up talking again all the way to two hours if we dissect this entire paper but basically mm-hmm. um, for this study we're saying na, like not even symptomatic yung angina episodes Um, yes partner parang as a whole so if a patient ko nagkaroon ng angina episode basta as long as parang I think um, ang main inclusion criteria dito, partner, was revascularization. So, meaning again, yung PCI, PCI use and an anti-anginal therapy. So, yung aside stent, from, okay. yep, yung mga na-stent, yung mga nag-trimet, yung mga nag-take ng other anti-anginal therapy aside from trimetazidine. Or, mm. like, like for example, nitroglycerin, yung mga usual na anti-anginal therapy. So, I think that's the main inclusion criteria for this study. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what this is telling me, from what you're mm-hmm. saying, at least, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it doesn't work agad, because yep. for sure, mm-hmm. bash ako. I would also <laughs> bash myself if I were to say it that simple. Yep, agree, as agree. Someone who hates oversimplification. What I can say though is, we can't immediately conclude trimetazidine would prevent heart attacks. Mm-hmm. Right. So we'd have to see. I, 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 what this is telling me is, we need to check first what kind of patients we're giving this to. Yes, part. See, 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 yeah. see, see, we can see, we can, we can mean well, but we also have to consider the risks, eh, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if the benefit is not certain for this patient, mm-hmm. again, depending on the patient, you'd have to read the clinical trial paper in full for that. Yep. And the risks, um, that's something I want to segue into the risks. Um, you know, we have we have the very common side effects, which I don't want to downplay, by the way, because if you've ever experienced, have you ever experienced severe nausea? With trimetazidine? No, no just with, in general, as a side effect, as a side effect. Because um, um, I guess for context for the non-health professional or student listeners, um, there are certain side effects we, we hear a lot in the classroom that we hear them yeah. so often, we na lang namin. But yeah. <laughs> when you experience them for the first time, you're like, oh no, oh no, this is not something to take very lightly. That's why I'm asking, have you ever experienced nausea that's like really bad? You needed to go to the hospital for it. No, no, not yeah. yet, partner. And sana wag naman. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did once. I did once. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it was really was weird it, because partner? the only abnormality they found in my lab test was like hypokalemia. So it's like, what the hell's Ooh. up with that? Yeah. Um, but 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 you know, whatever was the problem aside, the fact that the nausea was so bad that I just wanted mm-hmm. to like, I just wanted to. Oh no. Um. Yeah, um, I think after that episode, I don't think I ever viewed nausea vomiting the same way again. And and I also hope that our listeners, our viewers, also take this in mind. It, it not, yes. These things sound benign compared to, say, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, potentially fatal rashes, and all of mm-hmm. that. But um, don't take them lightly. Because you're mm-hmm. not, at the end of the day, hindi naman kayo yung inam na gamot eh. <laughs> yung pasyenteng inam na gamot, di ba? So 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 always got that keep that in mind. But fine, so again, to to satisfy those who want something more with a with a flair for drama. So the Parkinsonism. This one I was surprised to learn. It is not in the books, eh, no? Yep. Mm-hmm. When when you when you when you when you think dermatazidine, you don't think CNS. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't expect CNS. I expect CNS for the CNS penetrating drugs, but I did not expect of of all the places I would see. 
um uh, Parkinson Parkinsonian symptoms I would see it in trimetacidine Mm-hmm. Have, have you have you ito, have you seen this in actual practice? So for for those not familiar with Parkinson's, um, true Parkinson's that's kind of like uh your brain is degenerating, particular certain area that controls motor movement. But this is pseudo, pseudo as in your brain is okay, it's fine, but a drug is hitting a certain area and it's making the way you move kind of go wacky and all. Yeah. Um, in a specific in a very specific way, that that is. Resembles Parkinson's. Have you seen this in mm. patients taking trimetacidine? Partner, it's hard. Yun nga, sabi natin with the last uh, episode, it's hard to pinpoint if a particular side effect is due to this particular medication. Lalo na if you are giving this medication in a patient most likely to develop Parkinson's. So, Ay, o oh, nga, geriatric ano ka, eh, no? Yep, geriatric patients kasi ako mm. before. So, it's it's a real challenge to say that yes, I've seen it in in my patients. It's hard. It's hard not to be biased. Na ah, okay, may nakita ko ganitong EPS sy- symptom. It's it's automatically um trimetazidine or right. it's automatically no, that's because fair. That's of, fair. Mm-hmm, yeah. of Parkinsonism. So it's it's hard, partner. I cannot yeah, like one hundred percent say that I I saw this or ayun. So hmm. I cannot especially say in na, the Philippines. I think there's a specific region in the Philippines that we have like mm-hmm. a huge group of people. With a mutation that can actually predispose to Parkinson's, so, so that's like that's that's also fair actually. The pink mm-hmm. gene apparently very predominant in. Yep. I don't want to say the region because it's the region that I said ko and I'm not sure. So I'll just say I'm not sure, but there is a region for sure in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. So, uh, fine, fine. No, no, no. That 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 that's that's fair. I, I wanted to ask you, Sana, like, baka possible, but you know you're right because mm-hmm. given the baseline rate for Parkinson's could be higher. Yep. In the population you're seeing, it's hard to rule out that eh, it's mm-hmm. actual Parkinson's, right? Yep. And um, I assu- like, but I I did want to say then, but I also, what I wanted to say was like there are just also very few meds that can actually cause Parkinson's. Yes, if they're not CNS, I, mean, I think mm-hmm. the only other that I I would routinely see na hindi CNS that would cause Parkinson's is metoclopramide. Mm, or mm, mm. yeah, yep. so metoclopramide. metoclopramide. And, yeah, because very few, I know, eh, with that um ring structure, sa uh, molecular structure that it could lead to EPS. But okay, fine. Um, you're right. It's it's just kind of surprising to see that cardio drugs out of nowhere. Yes, you see will this have very that oddly specific <laughs> CNS side effects. Yeah, like this is very specific. Eh? <laughs> this isn't like dizziness or sedation. This is pseudo Parkinsonism. You don't see that mm-hmm. every day. True. Agree. Agree. Partner. Very yun yeah. It's hard to like pinpoint. Solely mm-hmm. because of trimetazidine, yes, yon. Yeah, this is this is this is uh, this is one of those no you moments. Like I love this point, but now it's being used against me. But I still love it. <laughs> I I I I hate it, but I love it at the same time. So okay, fine, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. So um okay okay last question before we wrap up um mm-hmm. this, is, this is a European drug we don't see a lot about it there I think I've only really encountered this a few times but there was one time that was very memorable to me. Okay. I'm sure since you're talking Jiria, you've seen this used in like many types of comorbidities for yes. sure. Mm-hmm. Um, one comorbidity I'm very curious about is like impaired renal function because it's very clear when you look at mm-hmm. the European FDA counterpart, the European Medicines Agency, when when the drug when the drug is registered there, they have like you leaflet and package insert. Yep. And you see there inside the insert, contraindicated when your kidney function is below a certain level. So for the more technical side, that's a creatinine clearance less than 30 ml mm-hmm. per minute. Um, and yet I have seen this used in such patients. Why is Ooh. that? What, like in your experience, seeing medicines that are clearly um, contraindicated or hindi dapat daw ginagamit sa mga patients with that level of renal impairment pero nagagamit pa rin. What might be the reason you might see? Hmm. So, siguro, this is speculation since I okay. I, 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 I don't want to give the full context of that case kasi you know, privacy and all that yep. and that was a long time ago pa. So, just speculation. Why might trimetazidine be used in a patient with like impaired kidney function even though the package inserts as contraindicated? In that population, what do you think? Mm, siguro on that side, partner, maybe because they're trying to like exhaust all possible options 
to yun nga to utilize the mechanism of action of trimetazidine so we said it's an anti-ischemic anti-anginal agent so they're trying to use that in that sense i think kasi personally partner i haven't seen trimetazidine given in a patient with less than 30 uh, um ml per minute na na creatinine clearance i've never seen it so if we we have this patient automatically it's being referred and mm. if, and since the doctors are already familiar with us referring this, sometimes automatic na yan, na they, they do not give it anymore. Because they're familiar. O, you, may mga ganong orders partner na alam nila uh. automatic na aming refer as a clinical pharmacist. So they know, ay, oops, irerefer to ng ClinFAR. So, <laughs> right, right. That, that's that, yeah, so we I, have, I think that's what they're Because other. these are very mm-hmm. delicate. I mean, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, I guess very complex cases. And yeah. you don't just want to dive in without like, multiple other heads collaborating yeah. on this one. Because mm-hmm. there's so many organ systems that will be affected, no? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. ganun din, no, siguro, like, is that also your experience with, like, other meds? So, so I'm guessing you've seen other medicines na contraindicated, supposedly, with impaired renal function, pero nagagamit pa rin in those cases. Mm-hmm. They can. Pero yun nga, in that sense that there is always the weighing of risk versus benefit. So, right. exhaust na ba right. lahat ng option? Uh, Why are we okay. giving this medication? Maybe na exhaust na lahat ng option and the doctors would just really wanted to like try this option. So, may mga ganong scenarios, partner. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I do love hearing about these reasons, to be honest. Like, like kasi like, um, I, I, I don't wanna settle for ah, because, or ah, kasi gumagana. Like, yep. mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna hear the detailed one paragraph explanation because, like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's also for future, right? Or when the patient asks, sometimes the patients do their own reading. In the same, yes, yes. Um, oy, uh, doc, or like, ano, diba sabi bawal dito? So, like, so like, how will you explain it? How will you also mm-hmm. do your part in encouraging adherence? Para hindi sila matakot, right? So, so, yep. so I also want to have like conviction and confidence in the team's decision. So, like, that, that that's the reason why I ask these kind of questions. Mm-hmm. It's like, um, I don't want to settle for ah, basta gumagana. That's so, I feel that's so lazy. Yeah. You know? Agree, agree, partner. Kasi yun nga, I agree on that point na as a healthcare professional, you just, you not you just do not recommend basing on the guidelines. Ah, ito kasing sabing, okay, we give this. Mm. And ito yung or ayaw natin. Or sabi ni expert so and so. Yep. Yun, or yung ayaw natin na term na this is the drug of choice. <laughs> Yuck, you No. <laughs> I mean, we've done five episodes. I think everyone listening in or watching should be familiar mm-hmm. why we say there's no such thing as a drug of choice. Drug of choice, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. Pang board exam lang yan. After board, forget that concept. Na. Uh. <laughs> Very true, partner. In the clinical setting, mm. <laughs> mm. agree, agree. So, yun. Um, I, I like that context, partner, that um, in, in as a healthcare professional, we really have to, to research as in, you cannot like give na, ah, kasi po sabi sa libro, ganito po. Ah, sabi po kasi sa guideline, ito ang number one being used. Yun, yan. Mm. Yun nga. I, I, I like that point, partner, you said earlier. We balance. Mm. We balance the context of the patient, the mm. needs of the patient, the condition of the patient. Versus what and is the happening. Wants. Yep, and the wants and the preferences. That's very important. Mm. We are patient-centered now. So that's yes. very important. Very, so, very we balance that, we balance the risk and benefit. So, yun nga, the pharmacotherapy of cardiovascular drugs, it's not like just basing on the guidelines. It's Mm-mm. not just basing on expert, yun na, sabi mo kanina, expert's opinion na this is the most effective medication according to expert like this. So, it's a balance mm. of, of everything. Always. Yun nga, Always. Yep. Ito yung sinasabi ko palagi sa students ko, you do not forget, sometimes you forget your, your patient. Yun yung ab- mm. above all the literature, above all the experiences that you have, above all the consultants, the ex- the expertise that you've been hearing, that you've been receiving, trainings. Sometimes we forget the patient at the end of the day. Right. And remember, mm-hmm. you have a patient here. You, just, you, just, you do not just have a statistic here. You, you do not just have a chart yep. here. You have a yep. living, Amen. breathing patient here in front of you who needs you for him or her to get well, who needs yeah. your intervention, your expertise. So, dun po pasok yung clinical eye partner, yung clinical judgment. So, at the end yeah. of the day, you have a patient here. And ang, ang goal natin, gumaling ang patient, lumabas ng hospital, and, and you know, Mm-mm. have a good quality of life, high quality yeah. of life. And, and and also, like, from a professional point of view, I, I see it also as a fun challenge when it's like, 
it, it's the kind of complexity that I feel like I could tackle. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, so like in the parallel universe, like I, I mentioned this last time, if I, I weren't into psych or neuropsych, I would totally yeah. go into cardio. So it's like, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, I feel like it's a different kind of complex that mm-hmm. I would also enjoy. Um, but at the same time, I think my head would hurt a lot then. So I just like keep <laughs> one foot out the door. <laughs> yeah. But no, no, you could think of my Because he like, no, you'd be surprised. We do a lot of cardio in psych. Yes. A lot. Yeah. So thank you for re-emphasizing those points. I hope like um we, we emphasize them over and over again because it's very yeah. easy to forget. When we, especially to get excited. So mm-hmm. good reminders, all in all. So mm-hmm. I guess to wrap things up for our finale, season one finale. Yeah. Um the usual rating. Right. So Mm-hmm. Um, Thermatazidine out of five, Char, how would you rate Thermatazidine? Hmm, Thermatazidine over five. Mm-mm. Similarly, I'm going to rate it as a four. All four right. shop for me, so kind of high rating, no? Um, because number one, um, in, in the context of angina, you know. It's hard, no? It's hard to balance the lit and, and the experience and the expertise. Mm-hmm. But clinically speaking, the way I see it, when when I have patients taking this post-recovery, parang it, mm-hmm. it's hard, eh? It's hard to quantify and say, like, yes, it's a good drug without, like, <laughs> having to say what happened, having to observe the patient. So, siguro, yeah. in that scenario that, that, that I saw the patient in the hospital, mm-hmm. however short that may be, it's a good drug in that sense. So, right. good drug clinically in that sense. Good drug in terms of availability. Mm. Good drug in the sense that um, when you give this to patients, it's it's very easy to be given. Yung form mm. niya, it's oral, oral. Mm-mm. Nagkaka-problem lang. Kaya hindi ko siya pinerfect 5. Nagkaka-problem lang. If you have, like, I think merong modified release version nito, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, I'm let not me sure. Check. I have to check. We can check the let FDA me. portal. It's very... Let uh... me check it really quickly. Oh, meron. Yep. Working. Yes, meron ngang. Meron ngang modified release version right. nito. Yep. So, uh-huh. if you give the modified release version um, to a patient na hindi mo pwedeng basa-basa bigyan ng modified release. Like, for example, you have patients on enteral nutrition. Right. Na naka-NGT. Yet, kasi usually ko na-encounter sa patients, ko na, na binibigyan ng trimetaz, tapos naka-NGT, mm-hmm. geria patients, typical. So, mm-hmm. it's going to be a challenge for the pharmacist to, um, how am I gonna, like, syempre, a modified release to, it cannot be, like, crushed or, or chewed, di ba? So, uh-huh. that's why I did not give it a complete five. Ah, uh, that yeah. merong ganong context. So, yeah, in, in yeah, that, yeah. the practicality context, hindi siya perfect five for me. But it it's still good in the sense yeah. that overall clinically, clinical picture, na overall picture, yan. So, okay. four for me. Yeah. En- en- enlistment you? period na ba sa inyo? Sa school niyo? Enlistment na ba ng subjects ng students? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So, alam niya na students na potential students ni uh, Ma'am Shar. <laughs> Mabait siya mag-grade. So, <laughs> choice kayo ng prof. Kailangan nyo siya piliin. I mean, you've seen season one. Ang bait niya talaga yung grade sa lahat ng gamot. Parang wala at na siya. Walang bagsak sa kanya. Wala ako. Pasado. Two partner. True. Oo, oh, wala. Siya, kasi ko, kahit sabihin mong 70 yung passing for some schools, diba? Wala kang below 3.5. Ata, o. Oh. So, alam niya na. <laughs> Mabait Pero ako, po ako mag-grade. Charot. <laughs> yeah. But ako, I would rate it 3.5. Not because, like for us, I didn't have like a solid opinion on it. Because you didn't see it. For Tymetazidine, my opinion, it's really more, again, but similar rationale for us, I'm leaning more towards, I would really like to see a good quality study mm-hmm. demonstrating that Tymetazidine can prevent major cardiovascular events, prevent heart attack, prevent stroke, things like that. Because, like, it's this one is like because standards go for psych and for ano eh, for cardio eh. for for cardio meds. There are so many cardio meds that have clearly demonstrated they can prevent these big big outcomes. They mm-hmm. can prevent the major stuff from happening. Ace ice palang arbs, just go to ras blockers. They prevent so many things, right? Mm-hmm. And they're so yep. accessible, affordable. And then comparing it to like trimetazidine, yeah, symptomatic is good. Mm-hmm. Pero, siyempre, because they've set the bar that high na, 
'di ba? Sy- syempre, yeah. parang na spoil ka na eh. Na spoil mm-hmm. ka na. It's like it's like ano eh. It's like sabi nga ng isang streamer na pinapanood ko. It's like when you're playing Warcraft and you go to Final Fantasy 14 and you play Final Fantasy 14 dungeons and you go back to Warcraft dungeon. It's just na spoil ka na sa Final Fantasy 14 eh. It's parang ganun. Mm-hmm. So so like uh, no doubt again, it's no doubt it's likely helpful. Mm-hmm. That's why it's probably still being used. But again, like for me, I, I'm slanted towards like in cardio, I'm really slanted towards the big outcomes. Like I want to see yeah. studies showing that I I want to see like more confidence to be able to say na, hey, this can actually prevent heart attacks. Mm-hmm. And we have like so we have like 20 randomized control trials <laughs> saying this. Because these tri- for cardio, you've seen our cities dating back to like decades ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so and, and sometimes you don't even bother doing any more RCTs because it's already been done the heck out of. So like <laughs> true, right. true. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, so for cardio, I, I don't think it's unfair to say mas mataas standards ko. When you look at like the playing field, no. Mm-hmm. So kaya yeah, for me 3.5. Plus, like in, in the field of cardio, we talk when you look at the price, like double digits siya. And while in the world of psych, that can be seen as cheap. In the world of cardio, we've seen uh, many of the cardio meds are like less than ten pesos, right? Yeah, many, many of the good ano ones. Yeah, many, many of the good yep. ones. So, um, like again, competitive wise, com- competition wise, Sermadazitin can do better. Mm-hmm. Oh this is me talking to the molecule. Sermadazit, come on, you can do this. <laughs> you can do better. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we gotta <laughs> unleash its full potential. You know. Yes. Yes. So yeah. That was Yay. fun. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think we could talk about that. Like, this is a drug you don't see a lot in textbooks because again, it's a European drug. But it's nice we got to talk about it a lot then. Mm-hmm. And I hope I hope everyone watching and tuning in um, also got something or at least something to think about here. Yep. Um, and you need to think a lot a lot, a lot longer because Char is getting married. Just... And Yay. Oh, really? Yay. Congrats. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, so we're that, because of that, we're taking a break. Muna. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't worry. We'll, it'll come back when it comes back. We'll be back. Uh, and yeah, we'll see <laughs> you then. So until then, whatever season two might be, this is Jarvin and... And Char. Yeah, signing out. And yep. we'll catch you uh, whenever we catch you on the next yes. season of... Season two. Of, of once daily, once daily. So we are confirming it. so this is confirmation of a season two basically yes we are confirming of a season two na rin yung po yeah. ang contract namin there is <laughs> <laughs> contract may bayad ba I'd like some of that yeah sana all charot <laughs> yeah, oh, okay so yeah thanks again dropping by see ya bye, bye. take care everyone